first. And I said, who's going to play the piano or the accompaniment? She says, there isn't going to be any accompaniment. <laughs> <laughs> Just you. Did you do it then? Yeah. So finally I told her I'd do it. I sang for her, uh, Somebody Loves You, and on the tail end of it, I added, I'll be loving you all. Oh. They were both crying. I said, <laughs> I, I didn't come here to sing to make you people cry. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. And then my brother wanted me to sing at his funeral, his second funeral. And I said, Junior, why don't you get a, a uh, person that can sing? He says, no, I want you to sing. So I said, well, I guess I sang for uh, Sandy. I said, I guess maybe I can sing for you. But I said, you know, the pipes aren't as good as they were once upon a time. <laughs> but I managed to get through. Of course, I sang, uh, I led the singing down at, at the Fruitland Cemetery for over 20 years. Did you really? Yeah. Finally, I told him I, it was just too hard to get around. I'd have to give it up. Do you but miss I, it? Hmm? Do you miss it? Yes, I do, you know, because I like to sing and I like to be with people, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know. I. Whether I'll get back to sing with the church choir, they're shrunk down again, so they told me last Sunday there was only seven in the choir. Oh. And we usually have 11 or 12, you know. So I don't know whether I'll get back or not. Are you still driving? Oh, yes. It didn't hurt me to drive, Oscar. Yeah. It only hurts me to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I went in yesterday and got my hair cut and went to the bank. I noticed my tank on my car is full of gasoline, so... You didn't go far. <laughs> there won't be any reason not to drive. I've got a driver's license for one more year. Do you? Yeah. And you, what, you got to take a test or something, or what? I didn't have for this time. Oh, okay. They gave me my driver's license and I didn't have to take a test. Okay. They just checked my peripheral vision. It was all they tested. Right. So. I, I, don't I see you got, your, you got your new specs on today. I remember last time I was here, you said you had to get them fixed or something? or. Well, I, had, I hadn't got my glasses since I got my uh, two cataracts taken out. Oh, uh, okay. I had my both cataracts taken out this year. And Dr. Otto said to me, when I went in with the second one, he said, you get a prize, Dexter. And I said, what's the prize now? He said, well, you were the oldest one that had a cataract removal yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I uh, her and I went over and interviewed a lady that was actually older than you. Yeah? Yep, uh, Esther Hunt. Oh, yeah. She's 99, so yeah. got you beat by a couple of years. Yeah. Well, I call Esther and talk to her once in a while, you know. Do you? Yeah. Nice lady. Yes. Yeah. And Irene you, Schultz. Yeah, you got you got that, that DVD too, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, uh, Roseanne, Roseanne brought that one yeah. in, mm -hmm. so I saw it. She's the one that recommended to do that, so. Yeah. Did you get out to see... Uh, tomorrow we're going. Ben Shaw? Benny? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. I understand Ben is not in Do very it so, good shape. Yeah, so that's what she heard, yeah. So we'll see tomorrow how it's how it all goes. Can I get you to talk about those pictures? Yeah, which one you want me to talk about? Well, whatever one you want. Whatever one you, you want to... Got a story behind... You will uh, notice that on this one that's got three three uh, pictures in it, we painted, played at the old VFW where the Montague Bank is right now. Uh, we played for the Shamont 
tool company in Montague to begin with. In 1964 and 1965, and I don't know whether the what the last one was, I think maybe in 1966. But uh, then when uh, Hooker came in, we played for them for a couple of years there. Of course, then it was torn down and we went to uh, VFW, a uh, new building, and we played for dances out there many times for them. And I'm kind of sorry that we didn't have more pictures taken on places that we played. We played for two of Charlie Gerber's daughter's weddings, and we played at the Ramshorn Country Club in, in, in uh, uh, Fremont. And so we've, we've had a lot of fun, you know. This picture is the closing picture at Jack and Jill when we first started playing out there. At, at the closing, they always brought that outfit in and, and we played from there instead of up on the stage. And of course, uh, on the This, this picture of the girls dancing with the fellas, uh, they had to bring men in from the outside because we were having 250 guests a week and about half of them were men and half of them were, or two-thirds two of them were women. So uh, we had to get the uh, fellas from the surrounding area to come in on dance night so that the girls would have somebody to dance with. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it was, I think I played out to Jack and Jill for something like 30 years and we certainly enjoyed it. Uh, this top picture, uh, is how we changed clothes and got some old clothes on that they had for stage uh, parties. And uh, you'll notice that I'm playing uh, the, the washboard, washboard yeah. with a quarter. <laughs> and uh, Paul Jensen is playing his horn on this picture, but usually he had a big drum with a long stick on it with a cord down to the middle. So he was playing the, gun, the drum and our tenor sax man would play the fiddle. So we enjoyed, I think that's one reason we had so much fun out of Jack and Jill is because they were having fun, you know. Mm -hmm. We we really had a lot of fun with them. Uh, this picture, uh, we were playing for Buddy Sika's wedding in 1961. And uh, Johnny Straw was playing trumpet with us for that, that night. Johnny Straw was a... Was a teacher over at New Wago. He's retired now, and he says he never plays the trumpet anymore. He quit. <clears throat> you lost one down in your down in your chair there too. Well, this is with Bill McFerrin and Junior and Lee and I at the old v VFW Hall on where the bank is. And uh, we got one here that we played 
This one we played in North Muskegon for a wedding. And uh, on it is Bill McFair and, and uh, myself and Junior and Lee. And I, I don't, I think that is, I can't think of who that, who we played for. But it was in North Muskegon. What's your, what's, oh, go ahead. And of course, this is the big one that, the band that, that I, I really think, uh, I wish we'd had some good recording equipment for this one. We got good uh, three-part harmony. Uh, if the trumpet player was playing the lead, I picked up the second part, and Norm Clunder over here on the right picked up the, th the third part. So we got real nice harmony. And uh, this is the gang that played together for most years out of Jack and Jill. Norm Clunder was with us from Muskegon. And of course, the rest of us were from the White Lake area. I think you got them all. I think I got them. What's what's your what's your any favorite memory you want to share about the band or? Well, I I missed the band, and I. After the band quit playing, uh, I tried to get Junior to play. I got a request from North Muskegon. A daughter over there wanted somebody that played the old tunes. And I was still working at the tannery. And they called me and I said, well, I don't know. I called Junior and I said, will you play this job? And he said, no, I'm running the uh, restaurant now. He said, I can't do it. So I said, would your wife like to go and play piano? And she said, no, if Junior doesn't go, I won't go. So I called Ike Hill. And I said, Ike Hill, would you like to go drum on a job in North Muskegon? He said, sure. So I said, well, where can we get a piano player? He said, well, I know one halfway between here and Muskegon. I'll give him a call. So he called him up and he said, sure, I'd like to go. So we went over to North Muskegon and we played for three hours over there. And the hostess came over and she said, well, everybody's having so much fun. Will you play one more hour? So I asked Ike, and Ike says, sure, I'll play. So I asked the piano player, and he said, boy, I'd like to play another hour, but I've got a job over in Nuevo that I promised to play, so I got to leave. So I said, I guess we can't do it. And she said, if I get you a piano player, will you play another <laughs> hour? And I said, sure. So this is, I was still working, so this is a long time ago. And here comes a little old lady up in her 80s, came over to the piano and she sat down and she run up the keyboard and she came back down and she said, okay boys, what do you want to play and what key do you want to play it in? <laughs> so we played it up. I think we played a, an extra hour and a half, and we had so much fun with her. So I love music, and that's why I enjoy our orchestra for years and years and years. We, we were always together, you know. And we traveled to Ludington, and we traveled to Fremont, and we traveled for the Standard Oil Company in Muskegon for a job, and one in Grand Rapids. So we played, and we played because we had fun. We all had jobs. And I think the only reason we got along so well 
is that we played the kind of music that they like to dance with. Mm-hmm. Now, what about now? Are you guys thinking about uh, putting another band together and going out there and doing it again? No, uh, Oscar, but after Junior quit, Jim Todd approached me. You know Jim Todd yeah. from Jim Todd's orchestra, uh, pharmacy in oh, Okay, Todd's pharmacy, okay. Well, Jim Todd approached me and he said, we'd like to have a saxophone with us. And I said, Jim, I don't want to start with you guys. You're probably playing a lot of different keys and so forth. So I said, I don't know as I want to play. He said, well, we're going to get together Sunday night. Why don't you bring your horn over and sit in with us and just try. So I went over there at 7 o'clock and I didn't leave there until 11 o'clock and I was hooked. <laughs> so I played quite a few jobs with Jim Todd until he died. He didn't come to our 50th anniversary. He died in the drugstore. So that's when it was my last playing. I think you played at my mom's wedding. Yeah. It was June and Lila Bale. Yeah. And they lived in Lakewood. Lyle right. Bale is my, was my grandpa. Yep. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You remember that? Yep. yep. And, uh, I know Rex remembered uh, Lyle, too, with Grandpa, with grandpa Lyle. Yeah. She used well, to work for Pillingers. Rex, Rex made a, a, a few mistakes in his tape. He Did said he? Uh, he said, I never, never... Uh, knew anything about music or playing. <laughs> I had taken piano lessons when I was young. That's where I learned to read notes. Mm -hmm. And in high school, I played clarinet with a, with a small band. But I had never played saxophone until after I got out of high school. I was wondering if you yeah. were going to catch that. I left it in there just to make sure you caught it. So. <laughs> Yes, but we started right out when we got out of high school. We played our our first jobs at at the garage where Dad had the garage. Mm -hmm. We played in the showroom. We charged ten cents to get in. <laughs> that's where we bought all of our orchestrations. We used to, when we started out, we played with orchestrations. But our late years, we didn't use any music at all. No. 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 I was going to ask you that, too, as far as the band you got together with the 80-year-old the lady coming up later on the piano. You guys ever practice beforehand or anything, Just or just go right there and do it? We just go ahead and play with her. Yeah. But uh, she... I, I said to her, when she said, what key do you want it in? I said, just give me four bars. After she gave me four bars and I could hear it, I didn't have any trouble at all. Okay. Start right in playing with her, you know? Uh -huh. But it was fun. It was fun. I played one job at the uh, White Lake Yacht Club with a band from Grand Rapids. A fellow that I used to sell leather to at the tannery had, he made uh, uh, guitar uh, straps for, that he sold. He bought leather from us and he refinished the, the, the straps and sold them. And he knew that I played saxophone so he had the job at the White Lake Yacht Club and he didn't have a saxophone. Something happened to his, so he gave me a call, and I, I said, first, I don't think I should uh, say I'll play with you, because who knows whether we'll get along together or not. He says, you just bring the horn down there, and he said, we'll get along all right. So I did. That was a good job. I made $100 for three hours that night. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, Dexter, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You know, we never made a whole lot of money, Oscar, playing. Mm -hmm. my, my first job playing at the North Muskegon High School was $12 for 
for four people. <laughs> a dollar an hour. Yeah. But uh, we played because we had fun. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I uh... wanted things that went on on in Montague and Whitehall that he remembered. Yeah, that's good too. But I... See, he didn't move to Montague until he was like in seventh or eighth grade, so he and his sister could go to high school here. Oh, okay. So he was a he's a he's a farmer from way back. Horse farmer. Well, oh, auctioneer. Oh, well, we had tractors later. Later. Well, how does that? How, how? Why don't we just do it that way? Want to talk about it, how it all started? As far as the, were you an auctioneer first, or? Oh no, we met. Okay, he was in the. Okay, I told you. See, I told you I had to put you on camera. Oh. But he has. Um, he had horses when he was. See, I didn't 15. meet him until he came out of the Navy, which was like 19. Got married in 47, then 46, but in 1945. <clears throat> but before that, he had a, he had a stable on the. Shining Drive. Yeah, because this is what he took the. He lived in Montague, but the, the stable was in Whitehall. Was across the lake. <coughs> yeah. And so they took the horses on a ferry across the lake rather than drop, ride them all the way around in oh, the spring. Okay. And in the fall, they did the same thing. And that's the thing that they took them on. Uh, boat. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll get. I'll get that? Well, I'll get pictures of it after when we're done oh, here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that was when he was fourteen or fifteen that he had a he had the uh, riding stable in wow. Whitehall on the corner of uh, Whitley, uh, Scenic Drive. Scenic Drive and the one that comes into Whitehall, uh, White Lake Drive. Scenic Drive and White Lake Drive because they come together. Yeah. yeah. Scenic does with what? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's Lake Shore. No, White Lake Drive and there's Zeller in White Lake Drive. Are there what? Scenic Drive? Well, where does Scenic Drive start? It starts. Point. Yeah, it starts at the four-way stop. Yeah, well, that's where his. Okay. And now it's all you know. It's all okay. Let's see. I'm putting a light here because it pans here because it, it picks you up better. Okay. But so that was that. And then he went on to high school and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then he went in the service, in the Navy. And when he came out, I had come up for the summer to, to work at the double, it was a Jack and Joe ranch then. Mm -hmm. And he had just gotten out of the Navy and he had a horse. <coughs> I don't know what it was. He always says, "Is it me or is it me or my horse?" <laughs> you like. <laughs> so anyway, that's where that's where we met. And what what happened from there? Well, we got married the next summer. Well, you was a, you was a waitress, wasn't you? Yeah, I was a waitress, and you were had your horses there. But that was at the ranch, yeah. And then, yeah. And then the next. Yeah, that was summer. I suppose the next was the next spring we got married, yeah. or did we wait another year? Yeah. Oh, another year, I think it was. Uh, anyway, one of the things. So I was home in the west of Chicago, and so we would talk, obviously, quite often. And one time he called me. Where is that beer thing? It would have been in the fall of '46. I wrote that down. And he, I thought it was kind of funny because it's, it's the difference between yester, yesteryear and today. But his uncle brought him home a bear from hunting. Don't ask me any details. But and he, so he put it in the. Now you can correct me, honey, because it's your story. He put it in there. Was it the fruit cellar outside? No, as a water tank. Oh, it pumped the water from the house into that tank, and then that from that tank it went to the barn. It was a water tank. Yeah, but it had a little room down there. Oh yeah, it was. Because your mother. Building. Yeah. Anyway, so that's where the bear was, and one day uh, the bear got loose. Now this is right in Whitehall across from the cemetery. Okay. Not very far from the school, and it was about time for the kids to get out of school. And 
you know, so this wasn't funny. I can just hear your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and so he called his friend Leonard Hunt, and he called uh, Bill Tiemann. And Larry Arrett, Larry Arrett, and two Larry Arretts, lasted them, pulled them down. Take your hands away from your mouth so they can hear you. I let him home. So they got him out of the tree, and they finally got him home. But they were so worried, because if the kids got out of the school, they'd be coming through, and that's all yeah. you... Now, see, today that could never happen. You wouldn't have a bear in the first place. No. Uh -uh. So we, when I came into the picture then, I don't know, I think his mother went out because they got rid of the bear. <laughs> how, how big of an area was the bear stored in? Just a little... Oh, just a little thing the size of a bathroom or something. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he he could come. I don't know. Well, he was a, he was a, had a car on, huh? oh, okay. rope, and uh, and he but, had a pen that he went into a, a building or little building with a roof on it. It wasn't much fun. I don't know what the uncle was thinking of. To tell no, the but uh, it was always always a he had to watch him. The bear or your dad or your uncle? <laughs> both. Yeah, probably both, because that was a drinking uncle, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that was one funny little story. Then after we got married... We sold the bear. The bear hunter up north. Uh, uh, I, I see smoke or something out there. Yeah, that's yeah. our furnace. Oh, that's your furnace. Yeah, okay. that heats this house and the house right next to us. Here. Oh, okay, I'm our sorry. Our son lives there. Yeah. I interrupted you. Because we're kind of funny. See, we started out in that. Anyway, we got married, and see, he owned this house in Whitehall across. It's not there anymore, right across from the cemetery. There's. Yes, it yeah. is. Big old porch around the outside of it. I think, honey, that's a. Huh? That's where the Sears and stuff is now. Yeah. Th that house is gone. Oh, is it? But the store is there because that's where we used to have the White Lake Greenhouse or whatever it is. Yeah, it's all shopping stuff down there now. Pardon? It's all shopping yeah. stuff down there now. Oh. Yeah. He owned 22 acres there and he always, it's one of his comments, I should have kept it and blah, blah, blah. You know, that goes on all the time if you had <laughs> foresight like you had. <laughs> it's, a, it's a man thing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's where where he lived, and then we bought the farm. Let's see, uh, across the road, forty-eight in April, we moved across, right across, straight across the road, <coughs> and we lived there thirty-two years. Now How long? Thirty-two years, I think. We Not lived. in that White House. Well, okay. Well, we, we don't need an argument because yeah, I'm probably wrong. But anyway, uh, we moved there. We ended up with like. What do we have? About 400 acres? 350. Like but anyway, then we bought the, the red brick farmhouse that you passed as you came in. And we lived there 12 years, I think. <laughs> well, uh, that 40 acres. See, we, so, we 40 sold this place with and, 40 and, acres. And this and we, 40 went with it. And we, all, we kept this 40. Yeah, yeah. And that, so it go, yeah. now we're down to like. 200 acres or 170 or something. But then we built the house next door because that was, a, we remodeled those other two. We built that house and we lived there 12 years. That's far off. We still lived there and then we built this little place. But we had in mind, I guess we had uh, that we might someday need help. So we have a, you know, we built it with the wide doorways and the, and the toilets that are raised. That's nice. And the things like that. And, uh, handicapped shower, and I'm glad we did. So that kind of, oh, and then during all this time, I, I, to back up when we got married, he decided to go to auction school in Indiana, and, uh, and that's when we sta he started auctioneering, and that was a great part of our life, that and farming, because we had asparagus and asparagus pickers for many years. Uh, can you can you still do any of the auctioning at all? I mean, you, Pardon you, me? were you one of those quick auctioneers where you would? Uh... No, we sold farm sales. We had uh, about four Excuse years. Me, Don't worry about my camera. Okay. We had we had farm sales and household auctions and antique auctions. Yeah. 
but we're not in a real, see the lake is on the west, and Muskegon's this way, the only, and that way is oak grub, so really the only real farming area is from here and up north. Okay. So we, the reason I'm saying that is we had as many or more household auctions in antique auctions as we did farm auctions, because he loved the farm auctions. That's, well, that was right when, <coughs> right uh, after the war, the big got big and the small sold out to the little guy, the big guys, and we just had all kinds of auction. We had I had three auction sales a, a week. Of course, it was only in the you know there's only so many weekends in the summer, so. It, but <coughs> that's what we did. I guess the question was, were you that one of those quick talking auctioneers, or? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I sold Ravenna livestock sale for for thirty years. Every Monday night. Every Monday night. I don't know where. Where do you guys live? White Lake Drive, across oh, from the Oh, oh, you're local people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we're actually true farmers. That's what he loves the most. That and and the auctioneering. Of course, it's all morning. He was calling square dances. <laughs> oh, really? Do you do the you did the square dance calling too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that anything was... that called for uh, talking and okay. stuff. Or you can... guys are just too young, see. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> thanks, but no. Um, so as far as the, the, the auctioneering, when you, when you say, say you had something there, um, a John Deere tractor to auction off, how would, how would you go about doing it? How would you start? I would say, hey, we got this nice John Deere. 45 tractor. It's got 465 hours on it. In super shape. It's a 45 horsepower. Three three bottom plow. Two in the heavy ground and three in the lighter ground. And we had highest three sales a week. He asked how you'd start doing it. Pardon? He asked, how, start auctioning. <clears throat> Who'll give me? Oh, auctioneer is goes. Oh, now we'll, we'll, we'll sell that John Deere tractor. We started at eight hundred dollars. Eight and a half, seventy-five. Eight seventy-five now. Four hundred. Eight seventy-five now. Eight seventy-five now. Nine hundred. <laughs> nine and a quarter. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Seventy-five. Nine seventy-five. Nine seventy-five, nine seventy-five, now thousand dollars. Hey, even money, thousand dollars, and that's the way it goes. Okay, all right, that's that's what I was looking for. One, one, uh, one. It happened to be a tractor. He sold four different times. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a that was a Ford eight M tractor, and uh, I had sold it at a farm sale. The guy that bought it. I got two thousand dollars for it. That was in the spring of the year, and he, he come up to me. He said, "Mr. Scholl, he said, that's a hundred dollars. That's a thousand dollars more than I paid for it. That tractor sold for a thousand dollars, brand new, twenty years ago." Anyway, and then I sold it three times that year, and every time it brought five hundred dollars more. <laughs> but our record was a player piano, the old kind. And we sold that four times. And the last time we sold it, it was out on the, out on the porch in a little house in Shelby or something. And uh, she said, we bought it and couldn't get it in the house. And so they had an auction and they put that on. <laughs> we know about moving pianos, don't we, dear? Yeah. Yeah, we can't live without a piano. And we've moved, moved many of them. <laughs> now, who plays the piano? Is that you? Yeah. Not now, though. No. What? That's what she says, too. You play I play piano? by ear, but I I don't know. I I haven't been well for I've had this darn cold, and it just knocked us. I've been laying down all morning. My hearing aid is ringing. So what else? What about, where'd you get, how'd you get involved with the tractor pulls? What, what got that started? Tractor pulls? 
Did you have tractor? Or plow days. Oh, plow days. Is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah, there's no tractor. All horses. Oh, okay. We had horses. He had. He's had horses all his life. Mm -hmm. And when our girls were growing up, I mean, the, our son wasn't quite the horsey one, but the two girls and Benny were all horses, 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 and, and shows and stuff. Well, when they got through school and left, then he had what he wanted, which was draft horses. And that's when he started having a plow day that we had it. 22 or 23 years, I forgot which. And that was, uh, people would, God, I got plowed in books all over the place. Bring, a, bring their own horses. They would bring, yeah. We had highest 55 teams plowing. And the whole idea of it was to, uh, <clears throat> he wanted the, the younger generations to see what went on years ago. And that was really the whole purpose of it. <clears throat> we didn't get as many people from Montague because most of them were oh, but but boy from Grand Rapids and we had we had them here for, for seven states one time hmm. for this Plow Day weekend. Of course, they made a weekend of it. They could camp here and blah blah blah. And we had a potluck at noon the one day and uh, <clears throat> we'd oh we had people well, well, up from here to that house next door. We had uh, had uh, breakfast. Yeah, we, we served breakfast, pancakes, and bacon, and sausage. Oh, you're thinking of you're thinking of when you had no riding stable. Oh. You know, the, uh, the we did have uh, the night we we started like on a fr Saturday night. We had uh, bean hot soup. dogs and, and bean soup and stuff right out here in the corral, <coughs> and then Sunday was the big day. But some of them came Wednesday before the thing, and some of them stayed till Monday, and we just uh, with their horses and everything. They are oh yeah, oh god, yeah. You know things are really get quite sophisticated. We had one <laughs> outfit from Adrian that area, and they had what six or eight? Eight, eight, eight horse hitch, and they. You can imagine how big that trailer was. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the so? What was the competition? What did they do? Plowing. By me to do it, was it who could plow the fastest or the farthest? Oh, no. Or? Not no, we fastest. We had judges. It the was best. The best. Yeah. yeah. The horses walk slow and just turn a nice furrow. And then we had we had awards at a certain time. We, we had a competition. What do you call that? When they ran around and stuff and did the different things. Competition. Obstacle course. <clears throat> But then at, at the end, then about four o'clock on Sunday, we had the awards, and they'd be like for the, for the, best, uh, the best, the best flower, and the best. And we had people come with their wagons just to give people rides because from this point right here, way down to that, way down there, you know, it's quite a walk, so they could. Well, we own a whole mile here. Yeah, and they they would uh, on both sides put their of the kid, road. You know, then they would, and people we. <clears throat> we encourage people to bring the whole family because there was, it was the only thing we one of the few things that you could come to without paying a penny, unless we are we also had our uh, Larry Yeager's food wagon. So of course, if they wanted the caramel corn and stuff, they could, but they could spend the day you know and walk from one end of the farm to the other and stuff. And then in the backyard next door, we had uh, the big swings and stuff for the kids. So you didn't you didn't charge anything for it then. Oh, no, no, wow. no, no. Like our our kids would say, "Why don't you put?" Because you know, we always had coffee. Why don't you put the little thing there? You know, so people could put some money in. And I said, "Well, then we're defeating the whole." Yeah. Mm -hmm. I imagine insurance. Uh, when I think about it now, too, if you're not making anything, you know, you're pretty well covered by your insurance. But if you're making money, like when we were auctioned, we had. Oh, three or four times a summer we would have uh, somebody at the state auction in our yard, like across the road or, or that. Not not here because we were already out of it, but the, the red brick farmhouse and that we had nice auctions. But we were making money. That was a different thing. If people got hurt then, mm -hmm. so anyway, so the plow days people appreciated that. We had nice write-ups. And you get the Chronicle? No, no. Uh, well, we used to. You know, they they had really nice write-ups about it and everything. Oh. Now, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't find anything that large for free anymore, that's for sure. 
Well, no. And it would, of course, once in a while the weather would be bad because it was always the last uh, weekend in April. Oh, okay. And uh, when it was beautiful, it was just fun, you know. But one time it was so miserable. We had <laughs> it snowed and rained and about everything that you could have happened. And we uh, just closed down and had after the dinner because you couldn't send the horses out to work, and people weren't coming. But most of the time we had we had pretty good luck. Well, and our fiftieth wedding anniversary or was it our sixtieth, fiftieth? Happened to be on the on the the weekend that we had the uh, plow day, so we had uh, quite a little to do that time. Now, how, how many things would you say you've auctioned through the years? How many things? Yeah, how many how many different things did you think you auctioned through the years? Or different events, I should say. Yeah. Well, one of our first big auctions was in uh, was when when Blue Lake before they before they bought it. And we had Fine a large. rug auction from, uh, uh, <coughs> well, it was one of the lawyers in Muskegon contacted us. I don't know where, the, I forgot just, well, no, it was the Burling Game auction, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, it was full of Oriental rugs. We had people from New York and everything else here. Had checks from nine different states. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we always sweat that out. But we had pretty good luck. We had good luck because people knew, people that loved auctions came all the time and they just you know and uh, if you if you hurt us in any way you wouldn't be welcome so so we had quite a honest group very few times did we lose anything anyway what did I write down here I was gonna... oh one, one of the picture frame right there oh by walking around, how, around the house, I need to see what we. Well, I can do that after we get done. Yeah, sure. I just started getting my Easter stuff out this morning, and I. Because I'm gonna feel I'm gonna, well. Wouldn't mind going around the the area here and take some pictures of uh, around the house too. So. Um. Who's that? This is Sherm's Ark ice oh. fishing. We're gonna have this. Oh, well, that's, that's fine. You can, you can sit right in your seat and I can get it here. Should I sit down? Should no, you're good. Sit? You're good. So this was before I came into the picture. I worked there. You no worked there. Time. You know where uh, Lakeside Inn is? Mm -hmm. Okay, you go down a little road to the Lakeside Inn. Well, right out, that's where this was. Right out. Right. And it... You you should tell this, honey. I'm well, it was out in Lake Michigan. That was a building. Honey, it was White there. Lake. Yeah, we wanted that. That was the thing. Of, that was what they were talking about. Remember that? Yeah, who, was, who was talking about that? There's pictures of it in the White House. Oh, the White House. Yeah. Oh yes, I imagine. Yeah. She, uh, Karen McDonald talked about that about yeah. the floating floating house, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, they could fish out of there, and then they mm. they had uh, in the winter time they had shanties. I had a hundred and some shanties out on the ice. I worked for him. I'd yeah. take them out to the shanty and build a little fire for them and, and start their fire and give them some wood and say have fun. How, how come that? How come that didn't continue? Was it liability? Pardon me? Why didn't it continue? Was it a liability or wasn't it making it? Or oh, I don't know. I was in high school. I worked for. A, a guy and uh, he wanted to sell out to me, but I didn't want. To. I had a riding stable and just. I don't know why it didn't. Maybe we, you know, now it wouldn't go cool at all. We used to have ice all winter on White Lake. I would right. ice skate all winter long, and you know now how things spotty things are. We used to have winter like in November. We're get yeah, but if, guys it, are if, the, if the ice melted it would still float though right or no well, well the could building there. yeah oh yeah we, they went out there in boats in the in the summertime and on oh did he run it in the summer too oh yeah oh i didn't know that. they rode out there boats all tied up alongside the, see that's all uh 
So how, how did he make it float? Was it what would he use to make it float? Was it just a float? Yeah. It like had big two big barrels under it. Barrels? That's yeah. How I kind of figured that. Yeah. Uh, like a pontoon boat. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I never knew that. I just thought that was a winter thing. Pardon? I just thought that was a winter project. Oh no, that's out there year round. Oh. It was anchored out there. Yeah, because to, to me that was that sounds like a great idea. I don't understand why they don't have something like that now. But was uh, he quite old? Was uh, Sherm an older oh, man? Oh yeah, he was probably 55, 60 when I was a young boy. Of course, that's not old now. <laughs> when you're 85 and 88. <laughs> anyway, and then. And then that was right about where he would take the horse, you know, when he had the riding stable in the summer, it would take him on that this ferry. Mm -hmm. God, I, I didn't, I didn't think it would be about us. There's a million things, but you, you just don't think of them. But anyway, horses were our general. We he, we had riding, we had a riding. Uh, well, right, yeah, right when we got married, we had a riding stable. You know where the White Lake Golf Course is. Right across sideways, you know, there's a, there's a, what the heck, is that Duck Lake Road or Michelinda? Michelinda. That Michelinda that comes right to there, yeah, well, we, and that side is all grown over now and everything, unless there's homes there. That's where we had a riding stable. And the guy that ran the White Lake Golf Course would come over almost every other night. If your horses get on our greens, if they get out. <laughs> God damn, no. Oh, Lordy. And then, and then we that was that, well that was right after we were married yeah because then the next year we we moved here and then we just ran our uh, riding academy from right there we would pick up the kids at the uh, Chicago on, Scout Camp yeah yeah Scout Camps and then on so you're like Fruitvale part. Road there's a big girls camp we would go pick them up and, so it was kind of part of a wasapi and everything you would yeah. work with them. Yeah, yeah, I guess did we have Wasabi? I think we did have four or five horses out there. No. Now, how many horses did you have all together? Uh, a lot of times in the fall we'd end up with thirty-five. Oh, okay. We didn't winter that many though. We didn't we? winter that many. When I raised, we had two hundred acres of land here, and we raised all our hay and grain. So no horses left at Hagen. Any horses no, or? not as of a year ago, because he, he, no. Our son, <coughs> our son lives right in the house next door. He teaches at Steel in Muskegon, which is mostly black. Uh, and he has a, and he's doing the farming now. In fact, he has, well, that's that's today, not yesteryear, but uh, he has community gardens right out here. And he has what? Community gardens. Oh, yeah. He has had 60 last year, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And, uh. Raises. He, he's doing all the farming for us. We, okay. we rent part of our farm out. In fact, they were just spreading liquid manure, I think, down there when, when you came. And what, what kind of what kind of products did you did you do a lot of the manure products do and stuff when you had all those horses? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a built of our land. Raised a lot of hay and grain for the horses. We had asparagus. We had a hundred acres of asparagus. Huh? How, how many, much asparagus did we have? Hey. 80 acres? No. 50, wasn't it? I don't know. I thought it was 100. That's how we're not, you know, <laughs> don't uh, pin us down on anything here because I don't want people coming over and telling us you're a liar. <laughs> we're having a hard time. <clears throat> anyway, so we had those kind of crops that we, you know, we had asparagus pickers and all this and that, and we had. We raised uh, a lot of peas for Gerbers. For Gerbers, yeah, yeah. But we had the, asparagus was the crop that was uh, the biggest. Maybe it was. It might have been the best crop, but but it was the biggest pain in the neck because you had all these employees. I had I had one field and I had girls because we had two girls, so we had girls on on sleds, and then. And then the next field over, we had boys picking by hand. And then later on, we had it across the road, and we had women. Uh, and then it went to Mexicans, and that's when we 
finally got out. It got it got so uh, red red tape and book work and blah blah blah. You know how that goes. <clears throat> but when we had women, it was kind of interesting. One gal came, her hair up like this. She must have had it done every morning before she came to pick asparagus. And <laughs> sitting there, you know, now they're sitting behind a tractor picking. And this one lady said to Benny. Uh, do I make any more an hour if I have a master's? <laughs> <laughs> I never did remember who that was, but we got the biggest kick out of that. <clears throat> you did pick it too. You, you and the kids did that once, didn't you? Not asparagus. No? A lot, of, a lot of the farmers, you know, most of it's that way. Mm -hmm. Have asparagus and have still have, because they, they still have pickers, because they just never figured out a good... Uh, automatic picker like they do for everything else, tomatoes and... Mm -hmm. We had three pickers. Or three... Two, we, had, we pulled three different pickers. You had pickers? The boys didn't, didn't ride though. They no, walked. they walked. But you had riders and I had riders. Mm -hmm. I had eleven, had eleven and two walking on both ends of the... Both sides of the pickers. Yeah. Because it's kind of rough out there sometimes in the in the, in the heat. No. Oh no. no. Asparagus is done with by uh, June, May and We're June. Done, done picking. Done picking. The crop is over by the Fourth of July. And there's no more asparagus. Yeah. No, we had more trouble with cold weather. You know, and icky. And, you know, and the kids. You know, and as the years went on, the kids don't. Work like they used to. And we well, we had girls with our oldest daughter. They just we. <coughs> it's always the ones that are active that do things. So naturally, the cheerleaders and everything, and other ones that picked asparagus because they were ambitious. So we had to work around their dental appointments and their and their cheerleading and everything. But that worked out fine. But it was later that we ran into problems with with the little oh, boys yeah. and stuff. They just. Finally went to Mexicans. That just screwed everything up. Well, you know, with, yeah, then, then it got the, the, you know. But there's a lot, there's many people, you know, there's big asparagus fields. There are, what friends say, 500 acres of asparagus. But uh, we were ready to get out of it. What else did I put down? Auctioneering, we did that. Well, I was just wondering too about the auctioneering. We were talking a little bit about that as far as some of the auctions, but. I mean, what some of some of some some strange things that you auctioned off before, or oh. anything unusual, or yeah, there would have been that if I could just think of. We ha I have a uh, big uh, wallpaper scrapbooks of every auction. I got six of them there, you know, like this. Every auction that he had. Oh, okay. And uh, so every once in a while we look through them. I, they should go to the. We're, people are raising heck that we don't give them to the museum, but we're not ready to get rid of them yet. <laughs> I should have brought your camera. We could have you know, got a few snapshots of those. What? I said we should have brought our camera. She could have got a few snapshots of those. I could snap it with this, though, too, but I don't want to have you dig all your stuff out right now. So, But maybe sometime we could come over or something sure. get some snapshots. Yeah. yeah, their books are right in there. You just put their you know, great big... I could have you turn the pages and I could just snap it with this too. Okay. So, um, and we had, oh yeah, now like in white, we had some nice auctions in white. Uh, is this all, everything I say is going on there? No, not everything. What, if there's something you don't want on there, I can cut it out. A few things <laughs> I already, I've already heard that I'll cut out there, so. Well, no, but, but a lot of the time, North Muskegon and Whitehall, Shelby, Oh, they just went all out, you know, for auctions. I mean, it brought money in, you know, people going and eating everything. And if it was raining, every raincoat in the vicinity would get sold out. But uh, Montague wasn't as nice as others. They wanted us to, uh, well, get a license. You know, wanted to pay. They wanted us to pay if we had an auction and stuff. Oh, okay. So we didn't have as many in Montague. We didn't push them. Mm. Don't go to sleep. We're talking. Getting too tired? <laughs> no, it's, it's, oh, I'm he 88 years old. Yeah. Well, I'm 
52 and I fall asleep by once in a while. <laughs>